Hi, welcome to this uh, first round move guide for the British. Um, now I did just record this episode, I should make you aware, uh, but for some reason the audio was corrupted so I've had to, uh, obviously all the moves were made, so I've had to go through the single player again doing the moves I used in the previous two videos. So it may look slightly different, but it should be pretty similar. I think we had the very, very similar results in the battles, so it's, it should look pretty much the same. Um, but so I'm just re-recording this now. Um, but anyway, so round one, the British. Um, at this point, I'm starting to think about whether I want to go for Germany or uh, Japan. I think it's more effective in this game as the allies to pick one power and try and focus all your resources on that one power. Um, so be it Germany or, or Japan. Now this could depend on how Germany's turn went. Uh, if, for example, they had a bad run in the Atlantic, if they didn't manage to take out some of these boats, if there's a transport still free here maybe, um, I would possibly consider going for Germany instead. Because if you've got two transports available, that's pretty useful. Because you've already got troops and, um, and Britain waiting to be transported over. So I'd possibly consider going for a, a attack on Germany there. Um, my general idea at the moment, uh, my general preference is if I get a choice, is to go for Japan. Um, do a combined attack as the um, British and the US to try and take out Japan as quickly as possible. Or at the very least get them isolated on, on their island. So they're away from all the mainland territories, and I get. There's quite a bit of IPC around here. There's these, both these. This is East Indies. This is Borneo, I believe. Yep. Um, they're both worth worth four IPC, which is great. It's a lot of IPC. The Philippines is worth three. So combined here, you've got eleven immediately um, from these islands, and there's there's a, quite a bit knocking about around here. So if you can take Japan off these territories, you're going to give. That's just. IPC going to the Allies, it's it's very useful. Um, it can be pretty tough to take Jap Japan itself, because um, they can stack it pretty nasty. If they know, obviously, a lot of fleets coming in, they can't defend themselves, they'll just stack Japan. And it can be very hard to actually take mainland Japan, but it may not be a problem if they're, if they're isolated on their island, and you can take everything around it, it's not a problem. You don't need Japan necessarily to win the game, and um, there are more victory cities available, so if you can isolate them on their island, that, that's, that's fine. Um, so, let's crack on. Um, now, normally on the first go, I tend, I not, I don't spend all my IPC on the first go as Britain. I like to just wait and see what happens. Uh, my plan with the fleet here is to try and take out this Japanese fleet um, because I want to free up a bit of space with the British down here. And clearing out this fleet is useful because that's obviously the battleship to get rid of. There are two fighters out of the game, and that's going to relieve some pressure on India as well. Um, a key point as the British is to hold India. If you lose this, it's it's extremely bad. Um, one, because it's more likely going to be Japan that takes it. If Japan takes it, they're going to be able to produce tanks three a turn, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Russia. Because obviously they're in hitting distance from Caucasus, so they could roll out tanks every turn and keep a lot of pressure on Russia, which Russia can't afford because obviously they're struggling for IPC as, as, as it is against Germany. They're already behind, so this is a would be an enormous pound to deal with. Um, also, if you lose India, it it's more than likely you're going to be losing Africa soon after, <laughs> if the Germans haven't already pushed down from Egypt and taken some uh, IPC away from you. So this is, this is Britain's bank basically this area so if you lose India it's gonna be like a domino effect you'll lose pretty much everything it's really hard to reinforce so keeping India is a priority for not just the British but the Allies as a whole um, it gives a nice place to obviously attack the Japanese from so it's very useful keeping it so our idea here is to sign bank some IPC um, I don't want to preemptively build some fleet I, I tend to build build fleet in India basically a battleship or two possibly um, but if the battle goes badly here I don't want to have a battleship sitting here doing nothing because it can be attacked by whatever's left it could be destroyed so I like to wait and see what happens first and then on the next turn possibly start building a bit more fleet in India um, so I'm just banking this for now uh, there's no reason not to reinforce India a bit though you can put three artillery in India just to ensure it's a bit safer um, and that's about it really I probably should point out there are more conservative starts as Britain. Um, it depends what you feel like. Um, 
there's obviously an option to take this fleet here, um, move it eastward. So take two inf infantry from Australia, move eastward. Um, this sub is really the only thing, possibly the fighter here as well. But that's going to be a, a tricky fight. I think it's a bit risky for the Japanese player to do that. You wouldn't normally see that if they ran away this way. Um, so you can try and just, just move this fleet away and try and possibly reinforce Africa. Or move them back up here and reunite with the fleet that's up, already up here. Um, it's up to you. If you wanted to go for a, a German attack, that might be an idea. So you're saving this fleet here and a transport, and you can sort of link up your fleet up here, and then just start pressuring the Germans with the obviously the fleet you'd be building in the um, as the Americans over here. Um, but me personally, I like to attack this, try and take it out. Another option, I suppose, um, is to go for this uh, transport and destroyer with probably an, uh, the aircraft carrier and the cruiser. Take that out. If you take out this transport. Um, you're slowing the Japanese down because obviously they want to be transporting troops quickly um, normally into Burma or somewhere around here and they're going to try and put India out of commission ASAP so obviously attacking this transport is going to slow them down in doing that so that's also an idea um, and then you can obviously move the transport here it's not safe there because it can get attacked by the fighter but you can always use it for one turn and ship some infantry over to Africa it's up to you but me personally, I always go for this attack. So we'll end the phase there and go for it. So throwing the cruiser, throwing the sub. We have to take this fighter out of Egypt, unfortunately, because it's going to be the odds are going to be against us if we don't take that fighter out. So we have to take it in. Um, move all that. Now this move from the German player, I don't like it when this happens because this is quite difficult to deal with. Um, which is why, as, the, as I showed you in the German video, <laughs> this is quite a good thing to do as Axis because it puts pressure on the British. Now, and I'm making this turn, I have to think about this because obviously we, we can't attack both ways, we're not strong enough. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try and go the... Because this force is weaker, so we might be able to overwhelm this a lot easier. Uh, and I will take a risk here and move some infantry as well. So we're making use of this transport while we have it, because it's more likely going to... It might not die, depends if we win this fight. If we win this fight, it should be okay. Um, but just in case we don't, I want to move these troops over quickly and deal with this uh, situation over here. The idea, obviously, is that Germany will take Egypt next turn, but we might have enough to overpower them the following turn. Well, uh, you know, round two. So we're just trying to cover that. But we need to deal with this German threat here. We can't have this sitting here, because if they have a combined attack from everything here and here onto Egypt, then we'll probably lose Egypt. The odds are way against us in that fight. Plus he could transport troops over as well, so we have to do something to try and deal with this. I think that's pretty much it for the Pacific. I'll just double check. It's it's a risky start, I think, doing this, but if you win, you're in a, a good, good position. Um, I don't tend to move this transport out just yet. I normally wait until the battle's over. If I if I lost the battle, I'll try and take um, two. Or you, you obviously you're in range of the sub, so it depends what you feel like. It depends if the battle's gone. If there's nothing left here, then you'd be more you safer to go this way. You should be safe from this fighter, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you're safe. So that's okay. Yeah, so that's it for the Pacific. Let's move over to the uh, Atlantic. So we've got to deal with these submarines. Let's clear them out. And what we could do here, actually, this might be an idea, is to move this tank down immediately to Morocco. Um, we'll lose this transport, but we're obviously going to put a bit more pressure on the German player um, and try and get them thinking a little bit. So let's do that. We'll move this infantry down next turn. Um, just quickly send some bombers in. So we're going to bomb Germany and I'm going to move these two fighters to take up this transport. We don't need two to do that but we're going to be moving these fighters into West Russia so they might as well hit the transport on the way just to deal with it. Uh, and I think that's probably it for the combat phase, or combat move phase rather. Looks good, looks good. So the key battle here is this, this um, the fight in the, uh, the ocean down here. But we'll see what happens. So. Bombing raid first. Okay, no hits. Good. Oh, a five. Very good. That's a pretty nice bombing run. I'll take that. Okay, Transjordan. See what we can do. 
Unlucky. Not great. But no hits back, that's good. So that was pretty clean. There was there was no hits back at us there, that's good. So we've got all our infantry left. Germans lost a tank and infantrymen, so that's pretty nice. This is the key fight, so we really want to win this one. Let's hope we can. Not great, only one hit, that's pretty disappointing. But they all missed, which is very lucky. <laughs> very, very lucky. Okay, two more hits, good, the fighters are dead. Lose the sub, and we'll lose the aircraft carrier. Pretty good, so we should win this fight now. Um, I'll lose this fighter because it's got nowhere really to go anyway. It's run out of uh, movement range. So, battleship's dead. Unfortunately, we've got another hit taken there, so um, we'll just take another hit to the uh, a cruiser. That's okay. The main thing is we took the fleet out. So, they've lost two fighters in a battleship, which is pretty huge for the start of the game, so that's good. And it's also meaning we, this transport's safe now to move these infantry back over to India, so that's good. Okay, one last fight here. Take out these submarines. Should be fairly clean. Okay, no hits for anybody. No hit for us. And there we go. Nice and easy. So, a pretty good start, I'd, I'd call that. I've seen worse, I've seen better, but that's... Yeah, that's, I'd, be, I'd be happy with that as a allied player there. Minus 42, but we took some... Mainly this, this is the, the big one, really. Some big hits to Jap the Japanese fleet there. So, this fight can go back to India. I normally move this infantry back to India as well. It's obviously, we've taken uh, troops out of India, so we want to try and stack it back up again. Um, these two infantrymen for Australia, take them away. We'll use them as we need them. Um, we can either go back up to India, which I'm more than likely to do. I think I'll probably do that instead. Or if we need them, we can put them back over here. It's, uh, it's up to you. Move this guy up. Move this guy down. I hope it better ship them out at some point. Put the bomb up back to Britain, and these two fighters will go to West Russia. So that's shoring up this uh, territory a little bit more. So that's the yeah the opening for the British. This is what I tend to do. Um, that went fairly well. Obviously, the plan now is to try and remove all the, the remaining German troops from Africa. If we can shore this up, that'd be nice. Um, possibly try and take out this battleship. Um, the idea now is obviously, I'm not sure what the Japanese player would do. In regards to this cruiser, you'd be expected to lose the cruiser. Um, what I tend to find is if the British win this fight down here, they won't attack the US. This is just my personal experience. They're more likely to, you know, gather their fleet in one spot and just shore up the, you know, the mainland there. Um, I've I rarely, I think, see them attack the US fleet after they've lost this one down here, because obviously, if they, they probably will win this fight. If they win the fight, then we're just going to counter-attack with what we've got up here, and they'll lose two sets of fleet, so all these boats will be dead. Uh, they may have a fighter left, or possibly a bomber, if they use the bomber to attack, but their actual fleet will be fairly low in numbers, which is good for us, obviously, because we're going to be attacking Japan hard. Um, so, on the back of this... I would more likely um, build probably a battleship and an aircraft carrier. Um, so look at our remaining IPC. So we've, yeah, we're going to have is that 51 IPT to spare. So that's going to be uh, an aircraft carrier, a battleship. That's 34 plus another fighter. So we could put the fighter in India into the water. Another fighter, a carrier, a battleship. If this survives, put that in there as well. So we've got a nice little fleet there, plus the transport. And we can start threatening the Japanese on some of their islands. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in this video or the one before I recorded that I lost the audio for, but there's a lot of IPC around these islands. There's four here in East Indies, four in Borneo, um, three in the Philippines. So there's a lot of you know good territories to take here. The end game for this strategy for me is to have the British controlling one of these islands and the Americans the other. So both of these can obviously are producing four IPC. Um, I like to have an industrial complex on both of these islands. So, so that's this one's British, this one's American. Have an industrial complex on either of them. And then we can start mass producing troops from these and really pressuring the Japanese player. Um, if you can get some complexes up on these two, it's a very good, uh, yeah, 
a good sign because you're going to be able to produce troops quickly they're going to be nearby and you're going to be able to keep the pressure on Japan um, obviously apart from the fact that you're obviously taking away 8 IPC which is huge for the Japanese because they don't have the best economy they don't have G um, Germany's economy so that would be a really good thing to do so that's the end game basically we're going to go down here first as the, with the Americans as well we're going to try and take away these two um, and try and help the British push these Japanese forces back um, and eventually obviously get the Philippines we want to control this it's not necessary to take Japan um, the actual mainland it, you don't need to take this to win um, if you can keep the Japanese confined to their island you're doing well obviously if they've got infantry here they're not going anywhere if they don't have transport so if you can control the water around here you're doing well so we want to keep uh, yeah, the Japanese locked up on their island and take away all their points on the mainland so that's, that's the end game anyway but that's been Britain um, I think actually f for this, it's, it was a pretty good turn. I think everything went the way I wanted it to. Um, we lost a bit more than I would have liked down here, but obviously we won the fight, which is the main thing. Um, I have seen quite a few losses in this thing. Uh, the, the amount of times I've tried it, I've won the majority of the fights, so the odds are in your favour, but just be aware it can be a bit risky. So if you want to play more conservatively, maybe consider something else, but this is my personal opening. But there we go. Okay, so this is it for the British, uh, British turn. On to the... Uh, Japanese.